Hello there poker fans. In this video I'm going to attempt to analyze a hand from the NBC Heads Up Championship. This is a hand between Eugene Kachaloff and Joseph Chung in the round of 16. It's very early in, in their match, not the first hand, but one of the first few. It was the first one that they aired in the match, I believe. And this hand was also featured on YouTube by the Poker Guys. They did a breakdown of this hand, which I would encourage you to watch before you watch me run through it here. That way you'll get to see the hand air on TV in their video, and you'll get to hear them analyze it just from a poker mind point of view. And we'll see how well this program matches up with their analysis. And I'm going to put a link for that YouTube video in the description of this video, so go ahead and look for that. Give it a watch and then come back here. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how I'm going to set up to analyze that hand on this program. The first thing is I'm going to enter replay mode, so I'm going to click on hand replay. And it's heads up, so I'm going to sit out all the players but two is by clicking on those and then you always want to be in the situation where your player one and the other player you're trying to kind of figure out is one of the other ones so make sure you leave player one as one of the players sitting in and then just so it's easier for us to remember I'm gonna put names in for these folks so for Joe or Joseph I'm gonna put that for player six so player six set player name and now that'll say Joe and then for Eugene, I'll just put the EUG, and that's player one, and set the player name for that one as well. All right, and then we want to get chip counts, and at the time of this, Joseph was in the chip lead with 101,800. You can type that here and then choose player six and set stack size. So if you do that, it'll change little faster way to do that, and I'll do that for Eugene, is to type in how many chips he had, 98,200. And we could do the same thing for player one, but you can also just go to there where it says how many chips they have and double click on that, and it'll change it for you, and that's a little bit faster. We also need to make sure that we have the big blind set up. So the big blind at the time was 1,200. So I'm going to just set big blind. It'll automatically set the small blind as half of that. And there were no antis in this tournament, so we don't have to worry about that. But if there were, you can set antis right here as well. And then the final setup phase is to make sure you get the player styles entered in. And so Joseph is kind of a loose aggressive player, so I'm going to put 0 0.25 for his tightness. So I'm going to go player 6 and set tightness. So that's on a scale of 1 being super tight and 0 being super loose. So we're going to put Joseph on the looser side. And then for aggression, I'm going to put 0 0.85. And it's already player 6, and choose his aggression. If I mouse over the name here, then down here you'll see their tightness and aggression come up. So we can see for Joseph we have that currently set to... 0.25 for his tightness and 0.85 for the aggression so he is loose aggressive and that's being read in the teal there and then we want to go ahead and set up the same sort of stuff for Eugene so that's player one we're going to change to now I'm just going to go ahead I actually don't know Eugene that well as a player in terms of having watched him and knowing his style um, but based on this hand I'm just going to go ahead and leave him as an average tightness and I'm going to set him as kind of passive. If you watch the hand, he certainly played it passive. And I'm saying passive because when I set his aggression, I'm putting it below 0.5. So above that would be on the aggressive side. Below that would be on the passive side. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. And we'll mouse over and make sure that's as we want it to be. So he's tight, 0.5, aggressive, 0.4. And I, I don't think that he's normally a super... Um, passive player, but he seems to play that way against Joseph, which maybe makes sense against a really loose, aggressive player. All right, and then we want to make sure the dealer button's in the right place. So we can just hit the advance button, make sure that was on Joseph, because that's the way the hand actually played out. So we get that set up, and then the next thing is to put in our cards. So we're looking at this from the point of view, point of, view of Eugene, and he had ace, ten of diamonds. So I will set that. And then Joseph just limped in from the button, 
kind of surprising for an aggressive player who would raise most of his buttons. So when he does that, we can get an uh, initial read on him, and it says he could have anything. But the stronger hands, which are in red here, are ones that he probably doesn't have because we're thinking he would have raised with that sort of hand. And then um, kind of a surprise here, but Eugene just called. So against this aggressive player, I guess he's trying to trap him a bit. So that's how we went to the flop. And then the flop was a bit of just almost a miracle for Eugene. It was the jack, king, and three of diamonds. So he flops the absolute nuts here at the beginning. As a ace high flush even has a royal flush draw. So if you mouse over your card or your opponent's card, either way you'll get the same read. And it talks about like what's the chance that you have the best hand. And so right here when it says 100%, that's because we have the nuts right now. We know for sure there's no way that anybody has a better hand than us. And when you get in that situation, you could either check or bet. And I think that Eugene probably should have considered betting here because King, Jack, 3, and um, there's a lot of ways that could hit Joseph's hand. Uh, according to this read here, there's a 40% chance he has some worse hand than us. 36% chance he has nothing, in which case he would fold. So those are the hands we kind of don't want to bet against. And then there's some drawing hands down here for a pretty decent chunk. So I don't think it would have been that bad to bet. There's a decent chance he would have either had a hand where he would have called us or some sort of draw where he would call us. But um, Eugene checked, so we'll go ahead and take that same line. And then Joseph bet 1600 and with such an aggressive player, that could really almost be anything after we check to him. So when we look at this grid, uh, anything that's maroon, we are taking out of his range. Nothing is currently out of his range. So that shows you know what it's like to play against aggressive player. Very hard to put them on a hand. So I think, again, we could do that same analysis here. We could raise. Uh, maybe because there's only a 24% chance he has no hand. So if we raise, there's a decent chance we'll get some calls out of that and get some value out of our monster hand that we flopped. But that's not the way Eugene played it, so we'll do what he did and just call. And the next card weakens our hand a bit. It is the Jack of Spades, so I'll click on the Jack of Spades and then click Deal. And you'll notice that after it processes through the hands and we look at Joseph again, we now see that we no longer have a 100% chance of having the best hand. Now that the board has paired, it's possible that Joseph would have a full house. If we scroll down into um, his possible hands, we see that we're way up near the top of his list. This would be the absolute best he could have. Would be two jacks for four jacks, or two kings for kings full, king jack for jacks full, and jack three, three three. Those are all full houses that could be or not flush. Uh, however, most of those are very unlikely for him to have because he's such an aggressive player. It's hard to imagine him limping in with those hands. If you're going to raise almost everything, you should probably raise your strong hands too. So we're still feeling pretty good about this. Um, he decided to check again, and Joseph went for another bet. So he bet for 3000 so if we're trying to induce him to bluff, uh, it seems like it's working. He keeps betting. At this point, now that he's bet with the paired board, that could make us a little bit more worried that we're beat, but not much. We still feel very strong about our hand, so we could still continue to consider raising. Personally, I like a raise in this spot right here because there's a good chance that he has some sort of hand. There's a good chance he's drawing. There's not a real big chance that he has absolutely nothing. And my philosophy here would be to get in a raise while his drawing hands would still be willing to pay me. I think um, Eugene was thinking he would let those hands bluff again on the river. And he just went for the call. And then the four of spades came. So check that off on the template and then click deal. And Eugene again went for the check. I guess at this point it continues to make sense to keep telling that story. And Joseph bet out at this point for 6600 And now we'd have to think about what we're going to do. So at this point, um, like our slow play options are done, right? There's no more cards to come, no more tricks to be had. So uh, at this point, I think 
we want to think what's the chance we have the best hand so 93.10 percent so really good chance we have the best so we could call or raise and so if you're thinking about a raise you should click the what if button to think about that first and it'll show down here what your range looks like and when you're going to raise you want to make sure that you can get called by a worse hand so you want to think alright if I bet that he's going to have to call uh, about 1200 and there's 18 or 12,000 and there's about 18,000 out there so he's getting pretty good odds there uh, he has to call 12 to win 18 so that's about a 3 to 2 so he probably needs about a 40 percent chance of having the best hand for a call to be break even so if you look at your own range here uh, if you go down to the spot where it says 60 percent or 58 percent if he has a hand better than this um, eights or nines then he can beat 60 percent of sorry 60 percent of our hands would beat him but he could beat all the ones below which would be about 40 so he needs something around the range of eights or nines to be able to call us so if we look here 6.9 percent of his hands have us beat and then drop down and find those eights or nines so we're going to go past some flushes and ace king hands and stuff like that so here's the eight showing up and that's at 41 percent so he has about 41 percent of his range could call us and only about seven percent of that beats us so there's a lot more hands there that could call us and pay us off with a loser than would beat us so i think eugene's raise makes sense and he went to 18,000. and then at that point Joseph did something that made uh, Eugene's face contort. He went all in. So let's just set that as 100,000, which would put us all in. And when we do that, uh, and we look at Joseph now, we have to be worried that we're beat. Uh, we just check raised, and he re-raised us back. The number one hand that shows up in Joseph's range is four and a jack, which makes me a little proud because if you've watched the video, you know that's what he actually had was a jack four. And the program says 25% chance that's what he's holding now. Um, would we have called or folded? Well, at this point, it still says we have just under a 50% chance of having the best hand. So given the price, it, you'd think it'd be pretty tempting to call. 125,000 um, in the pot and we need to call about 78,000 but we would be out of the tournament if we're wrong and the amazing thing is that with the nut flush and uh, even the passive way he played it until the river he found a fold there and got away from the loss against Joseph's jack four so given this chance the math there kind of says to call but if you listen to the analysis from the poker guides um, one of the things they're saying is that given the size of this bet, which my program doesn't really consider too much, um, Joseph is probably not bluffing. And when you take that into consideration and you know that he thinks that we have at least eights, then anything under eights would be a bluff for him. So if you go down and find hands like that in Joseph's range that are below eights, uh, let's see, where would that start? Below the jacks, I guess. So somewhere around here are his bluffs. If you don't believe it's a bluff, you could take out that portion, and that's about 25% of his range. And now it's starting to be a little bit more understandable where if Eugene discounted those, he could have found a fold. But a couple things amazing to me is that he made the nut flush. Joseph Chung caught up with the jack four for a full house. Um, and yet Eugene was still able to get away with um, a decent amount of chips left and the poker guys say he went on to win this tournament so pretty amazing and then the other thing um, for me that I'm just kind of proud of is that in my program uh, Jack 4 is the lit up as the number one holding that Joseph could have had at 25.2 percent and that really is what he did have so that's how you can use this program to try and analyze a hand that you've seen and you can do some more work to try and analyze your own hands that you've played. All right, thanks for watching and check the information for a link to download this program if you think it would be useful for you.